Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eternal and welcome back to my C++ series. So, today we're going to be talking all about multi-dimensional arrays in C++. 2D arrays, 3D arrays, 4D arrays, doesn't matter how many dimensions we have, I'm just calling them multi-dimensional arrays because you can have as many dimensions as you want. First of all, if you haven't seen my video on arrays, definitely check that out because I don't want to waste time here explaining what an array actually is. We're just specifically going to focus on multi-dimensional arrays. And also definitely check out my video on pointers if you haven't already. Pointers are really important when you're dealing with arrays of any kind because arrays are just blobs of memory and really easy way for us to deal with memory is by using pointers. So definitely check that out. Okay, so multi-dimensional arrays, how do, how do they differ from regular arrays and why do we have them, why do we use them, and why maybe shouldn't we use them sometimes? So multi-dimensional arrays, we'll start with a 2D array, two-dimensional array as an example. Really all it is, is just an array of arrays. And then if you have a 3D array, it's an array of array of arrays, <laughs> right? So a two-dimensional array is an array of arrays. What I mean by that is it's literally a collection of arrays. So if we think about one, one of our kind of strategies for, for dealing with arrays is essentially by using a pointer. So we have a pointer to the beginning of the array as it appears in our memory. That's how we kind of, that's how we deal with an array in this case, right? So if you picture that, and then you picture an array of those pointers, what you kind of end up with is I have a bun I have a buffer in my memory which contains consecutive kind of pointers and each one of those pointers points to a array somewhere in my memory. So what you end up with is a collection of pointers to arrays, an array of arrays, right? And we're gonna jump into some C++ code and actually take a look at this because it's gonna be a lot easier than trying to visualize it. Um, but that's basically what you end up with. So if I come over here into my code, what I'm going to do is just heap allocate a simple array to begin with, just so that we're all on the same page. Let's just say I allocate 50 integers over here. I'm just using heap allocation for now because it's going to be easier to explain because we get a pointer straight away and it's just a bit more apparent what this actually is. If I want to have a two dimensional array, what I'm going to do is have a pointer of pointers because what I'm actually storing here is going to be a buffer of pointer objects, right? So this is a pointer to a collection of int pointers. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because the allocation of two dimensional arrays in C++ is some is not really that straightforward. In other languages like C Sharp or Java, or you, you can just kind of, it, it will just, it'll allocate all the memory that it needs to for you. And it's really easy to deal with. With C++ it's not. Because notice here what we've actually done. We've changed from just having a pointer to an integer to having a pointer to a pointer to an integer. So we've got a pointer to an integer pointer now, not to an actual integer. That's really, really important because in this case, we're building a 32-bit application. So what we actually end up with is a pointer and an integer being the same size. But if we had an actual like class or a struct or something that was 20 bytes large, for example, then in the first case, what we're actually doing is we're allocating 50 20 byte chunks, right? Which essentially ends up with us having a thousand bytes of allocated memory. Whereas here, what we're doing is we're allocating 50 pointers. So 50 times four, so it's 200 bytes of memory. It's a completely different allocation size. And if you actually look at this code and I'll kind of, I'll say, I can't call it 2D array. I'll just call it A2D, array 2D, terrible naming, I know. Um, what we're actually doing here is we're allocating 50 integer pointers. So room for us to store 50 integer pointers. That's all this is. The actual arrays that we're storing haven't actually been allocated yet. What we've just created here is we've essentially allocated 200 bytes of memory. When you look at code like this, it's really important for you to kind of think about what you're actually doing here. You're not in any way creating integers whatsoever. What you're doing is you're basically just allocating memory. And all this, this whole system of int and 50, that is just setting the size of the allocation. We know that an integer is four bytes and we know that we want 50 of them. So 50 times four is 200. So we're allocating 200 bytes of memory. That is all that is happening here. Nothing's being, nothing's being initialized. Nothing's saying that, okay, these are integers. Doesn't matter. 
I could then proceed to use this integer to store floats, right? Or this array to store floats. It doesn't matter. What I've done, what, I, what all that I've done is I've allocated 200 bytes of memory. That's it, right? So the, the big thing here then, if you look at this, is that these, these allocations are actually identical. What I've done here is the same as what I've done here, okay? All I've done is I've allocated 200 bytes of memory in both cases. It's just that when I start to deal with these, for example, I say A2D0 equals whatever it may equal, that's a different operation, right? Because if I address it like this, I'm talking about an integer. Whereas if I address it like this, I'm talking about an integer pointer because that's the underlying type. So that's kind of step one to this whole process. And that's kind of my way of teaching C++. I need you to realize what's actually happening behind the scenes because that's the only way you're gonna get good at using this language is by knowing what's happening so that you can then kind of play around with that and change that. So the big thing here is again, the type is just setting basically the syntax that you can use to deal with this data. In the end, it's 200 bytes. That's all that you've done at this stage. So what we want to achieve with our two-dimensional array kind of system here is now that we have room to store 200 bytes worth of pointers, so 50 pointers, we can then go through and set each of those pointers to point to an array. And that way, what we actually end up with is 50 arrays, right? So we have an array of arrays. We have we have an array which contains the memory locations of 50 arrays. Hopefully that makes sense. So if we go back here, the way that we do this is we loop through 50 times through this A2D array. So we know that we have 50 of them. And then we say A2D at I equals new int 50. Okay, just like that. So what that's done, let's get rid of that single dimensional array here. What we've done here is we've essentially allocated 50 arrays. And each one of those arrays, the location of each one of those arrays is stored inside this A2D array. And that is what a two-dimensional array is. Now, if you had a three-dimensional array, you have a nested for loop. So you'd go through and you'd allocate, you'd have to allocate essentially, you know, the inner level, which is kind of one dimension. Again, it might be easier to just picture like a cube or something or a grid, kind of a cube grid right? And then just kind of go through and picture filling up each cell. Like you'd have to go through X, through Y, and through Z. There'd be three dimensions to that. It'd be the same here. It might actually just be easier to sh for me to show you. So a three-dimensional array would look like this. We'd have a triple pointer here. We'd be allocating a pointer of pointers. Then what we would, what we would do here is we know that we have 50 pointers to pointers, okay? So this is getting a bit more confusing. So what we have to do here is actually say, and I'll call this A3D, we'd have to say A3D <clears throat> at index I, and I'll actually change these to be probably X and Y maybe, I'll, I and J will work as well. So A3D I, which is a pointer by the way, that, that's a pointer to pointers, would be equal to a new int pointer allocation of 50, right? So we now have 50 of those. And then for each of these, we also want to go through them. So I'll call this variable J and allocate each of these. So A3D, I, I remains the same. And then this becomes J equals new int 50. Okay. So we've added another index here because, and I'll break this down a little bit more so it's more easier to see, because this A3D is a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. So this is kind of dereferencing the first part of that pointer, and then this is dereferencing the second part of that pointer. So it would be the same as if I said, let's get our A2D from this, or our 2D kind of pointer here, so we'll say PTR equals A3D I, right? And then to this A3D I, I'm going into, oh sorry, to this pointer, what am I saying? Yeah. To this pointer, I'm actually saying access that at index J and set that up with 50 of those. So this is a 3D, 3D allocation. Okay. So what we're doing here is we've got 50, we've got 50. This, I'm like confusing myself by saying this. I hope this is making sense. This is one of those cases where you're going to have to sit down, stare at this code, maybe draw something on a piece of paper and figure out how it works because this is pretty difficult to explain. I'm not going to lie. Back to this though, I'll, I'll give it one more shot. So we, what we have here is three pointers. Okay. Well, not three pointers, but a pointer to a pointer to a pointer. That's our type. 
We've created, what we've done here is we've allocated 50 pointers. I might actually make a video on what pointers to pointers mean because that might be confusing in itself. But anyway, we've allocated 50 pointers to pointers, right? We're going through each of those pointers to pointers and creating an array of pointers. And then we're going through each of those pointers because what we have here is just normal array of pointers. And we're setting each of those pointers to an actual array. So we're allocating our actual type here, int. And this is what we would, this is the actual type allocation because this is, you can note, this is just a pointer allocation. Like we're allocating an array of pointers here, but here we're actually allocating our array of integers. And then if we want to access this, we'd have to go A3D and then kind of, you know, the outer coordinate, the middle coordinate, so X, Y, and then we'll say Z. And then that's how we would set each one of those. Okay, so you can see that it literally is a three-dimensional array because if we just take that, that's going to give us an array of pointer to pointers. And if we take that, it's going to give us an array of pointers. And then this is what actually gives us our integer. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Um, anyway, back to the 2D example, because it's going to be way easier to explain. Um, again, zero and then zero, this is the first element. And if you want to go to the second element, you access it like that, and the third element like that, you have to remember that this row here, this kind of the rightmost row, that is your actual integer that you're accessing. If you shift over and you take a look at this column here, that is just, that is the index of a pointer, not of an integer, because that's this array that you're actually dealing with. That's what this column is. Whereas this column on the right here is actually this inner array that you're dealing with. Okay. So that's two dimensional arrays. Now, when it comes to deleting them, which is what we have to do as well, if we heap allocate them like this, you have to go through and iterate and delete all of those arrays because you can't, you can't, you cannot just delete this. If I go ahead and I say delete and I do a 2d or whatever like that, sorry, you, you, you'll note, by the way, I typed that there specifically, you'll know that there is no such thing as that operator. So you can only delete an array like that. If you go ahead and you just do that, do that and you delete it, what that's going to do is that's going to release this memory which is just 200 bytes worth of memory. It's just the array that holds pointers to your actual integer arrays. So all of those 50 times 200 bytes that you have there, that is your actual data, those all those 50 arrays, they're now gonna be a memory leak because we have no way to access them. We can't delete them in the future because we just deleted the array that held those pointers that told us where those other arrays were. So what you actually have to do to delete this is iterate through this 50 times and delete a2d at index i like that. That is what deletes it. And then finally, you also have to delete a2d. So that's kind of the reverse of that. All right, hopefully that made at least a bit of sense. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below and I, I'm sure I'll end up making videos. This is, was a harder video to make and I'm not actually done yet. So I'm gonna keep talking for a bit. What I've, what I've said here, is that an array, a two-dimensional array or a multi-dimensional array is just an array of arrays. Now, here's my issue with this whole thing, apart from evidently being really hard to deal with. It's the fact that when you're dealing with an array of arrays, you result in it, that this results in memory fragmentation. So what I want here, really, and let's just, again, I'm just gonna, I don't know why I went with 50, let's go with five. That's a bit of, more of a manageable example to deal with because we can actually picture 25 elements. If we have an if we, we what we have here is an array of five arrays, and each one of those five arrays is an array of five integers. So we have 25 integers. Five times five is 25. Okay. Each instead of us having just one continuous buffer that was capable of holding 25 integers just in a row in memory, what we've actually done is we've created five separate buffers of five integers each. Okay. They're going to be allocated unless you're using some kind of custom allocator or an, or an arena or something like that. They're going to be allocated in completely random places in memory. They might be close together. They, they might not be. Nothing guarantees that they're going to be close together. That's an issue because if we have to iterate through and access each of those 25 integers, every time we iterate through five integers and we go to the next row of our array or our next dimension, basically we drop down to our next integer array we have to jump to another location in memory to read, to access that data, to read or write that data. And that's gonna result probably in a cache miss, which means that we're wasting time 
fetching that from our actual RAM. It might not be a cache miss if they happen to be allocated close together, but again, there's nothing for us. To, we can't rely on them being allocated close together. They're most likely not going to be. So because of that, it's actually going to be slower, a lot slower, a lot slower to iterate through these 25 integers this way than if I had just allocated a single dimensional array of 25 integers in a row in memory, because that memory is going to be all in a row. And one of the most important things when you're programming and you're optimizing and you're dealing with memory, well, one of the most important things you can do to optimize is actually optimize your memory accessing. So if you can store memory close together that you'll be accessing and you can kind of actually position it in a way that results in more cache hits and less cache misses, your program will perform faster. And we're definitely going to learn more about caching and like how the CPU cache works and all that in the future. But this is kind of a good way, I think, to introduce it. Now, people say, well, I need a two-dimensional array. There's no other way to deal with it, right? Wrong. You've got 25 integers here. That's what you've made. You've made an array of five integers five times. That's 25 integers. Can you really not think of a better way to store 25 integers? You can just store them in a single dimensional array. Look, I'll show you. What you could do here is just make an array of five times five integers, okay? Okay, so let's just say I wanna set all these integers to, I don't know, two. So I'd have to iterate through them this way. We'll say for in, uh, for in y equals zero, y is less than five, y plus plus. And then we'll have to, so that iterates through our array of pointers. And then we'll go in the inner loop, change this to x, and we'll iterate through uh, the actual arrays. And we'll say a two d x y equals two, okay? That's how I set it. And you're like, this is cool though, because it's like I've got a 2D grid and I can be like, oh yeah, index, you know, X is two, Y is three. Like it's really easy to deal with like that. Well, you can do the same thing here. I mean, obviously if you wanted to set everything to two in this array, all you really would have to do is just say four and I equals zero, I is less than 25 or five times five, I plus plus, and then array I equals two, easy, uh, equals two, easy, right? But you could also write it this way. And then it's just, instead of doing um, that, you just say X plus Y times the width of your array, which is five. So this kind of dimension over here, right? Or this dimension here, it doesn't really matter. Well, it does matter because it's, it's your width. If you have a grid, this is your width. Because what you're saying here is you're saying that every time the Y increments, I want you to jump five elements forward, which would be the equivalent of just dropping down a row if you had your grid, okay? We can talk about this in more detail if you would like, leave a comment below and I'll see what kind of, uh, what your thoughts are. It's kind of hard for me to gauge where you guys are at this point. Like you are like, I mean, I know that obviously a lot of people with very varying, varying kind of skill sets watch these videos, but now that, you, now that there's like 50 plus of these videos, I feel like you guys are kind of like my class or my students and I really want to know where you're at. So if you don't understand this stuff and you want me to explain it with diagrams and a bit more, uh, a bit more, then I'll definitely do that anyway. So that's kind of the idea here. You can see that I can access this exactly the same way as a two-dimensional array. But guess what? This code is actually a lot faster than this code because this code, every five, every time we go to this outer for loop, has to jump to a completely different array in memory. Whereas this is just accessing that same memory that's all in a row in our actual memory. So I personally avoid 2D arrays as much as possible. Sometimes it makes a lot of sense to use them. Most of the time it doesn't, okay? If I was storing a bitmap, for example, and I had all the pixels in an image, you might think of an image, like a photo or like a texture, as a 2D thing, right? Like you've got pixels and it's like a two, it is like a 2D grid, right? So I should store it as a 2D array, right? No, store it as a single dimensional array. It doesn't matter that you can't, like you can still, it, it doesn't matter how you store it. You can store it as a two dimensional array or a one dimensional array, but the one dimensional array way it's going to be the much, much, much more optimal way of actually storing that image. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you to all the patrons that make this series possible because it would not be here without you. If you want, uh, there's plenty of really cool rewards for supporting the series, such as getting like a monthly hangout with all the other supporters of that tier, as well as source code access to my OpenGL series and like, a private discord like channel where we can talk about stuff and there's plenty of stuff there 
and it really does help support the series. So thank you so much to those people. Um, yeah, I'm really interested with this video to see what you guys think. So leave a comment below and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.